I tell you what, I absolutely love to power fish. Picking up a, a big rod, a spinner bait, a chatter bait, a jig, and going out there and catching fish. But it just seems like more and more days that I go out there and go fishing, I'm using a lot of spinning rod equipment and I'm using a lot of finesse lures. I just think with the, the pressure that our lakes and our, our different bodies of water see these days that there's, there's a lot of days that I go out there and you really have to finesse in order to catch them. And in today's video, I wanna talk about three finesse baits that aren't the norm, ones that maybe you're not really picking up and ones that are extremely effective. But real quick, before we get into the video, guys, I just wanna let you guys know again that I'm going to be here in Columbus, Ohio at the Columbus Fishing Expo starting tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm actually giving a seminar at two o'clock on a Sunday. It's right before everything closes, so there might not be that many people there. But anyways, if you guys wanna come check out some fin fishing apparel, if you wanna come talk to me, talk fish, please do so. Please come on. I can't wait to see you guys. All right, let's get into this video. And I want to talk about three different finesse lures that are, like I said, a little bit more under the radar. Ones that you may have heard of and you may know of, but it's just still ones that a lot of anglers don't fish. Now, the first one is a spy bait. And this is uh, another one of those kind of Japanese lures. Uh, I think Duo Realis was the first one to really come out with a spy bait. And if you guys don't know what a spy bait is, I'll, I'll throw an image of it across the screen right now. But a spy bait kind of looks like a prop bait, but this particular bait sinks. And as you cast that out and as you reel this bait in, a spy bait has a very unique motion to it. And what it does is it rocks. When you see this bait coming through the water, it rocks side to side and every time it rocks side to side it shoots a little flash of the side of it out it's a little flash it's it's an extremely good technique and it's not just a smallmouth lure I think that there is a little bit of a misconception that this is a smallmouth bait and I'm, I'm not gonna lie I've caught a ton of largemouth with this thing. And of course, I've caught a lot of spotted bass too. And I think that a lot of anglers also think that it is a, a, a bigger wadi bait, a bigger water like lake bait. And I actually, I, I never even said anything about this, but I made an entire spy bait pond fishing video last year and my footage got completely erased. It was my own fault. I erased it without actually exporting it. But a spy bait is actually a great little pond bait and especially because in ponds you have a lot of smaller minnows that the bass feed on you also have those smaller bluegill that the bass feed on and if you have a pond that has a couple feet of visibility i'm telling you what you pick up that spy bait you cast that thing out there and you just reel it kind of slow medium pace and you're gonna catch a lot of fish on that little bait. It's a super, super fun bait. I've really kind of found, I've really kind of just seen how effective it is over the last couple of years. And it's something that I have with me a lot when I go out there and go fishing. So if you guys have not tried a spy bait, I'm telling you what, you just need to pick the thing up. If you if you wanna know my favorite spy bait, it's the Spin Bait 80 by Duo Realis. Um, that's the one that I use a lot. There's also what's called a G Fix in that exact same uh, Spin Bait 80. It's, it's like one gram more. It makes that bait kind of sink a little bit faster. You can cast a little bit further, but if you're fishing in ponds, I would just go with that typical Spin Bait 80. As always, I will leave a link down below in the description. All right, let's move on to the next lure. This is one that I cannot even stress to you how many fish I have caught on this. And it is really, it's an old school lure. It's one that um, a lot of guys used to fish. There's a ton, it, you know, you ask the, uh, a little bit older generation, you know, guys in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, they will tell you, man, we used to fish that thing all the time. I've had guys comment on the channel, my channels before saying like, yeah, I put that down. I don't know why I did. And this bait is a Gary Yamamoto hula grub. Okay, this is also known as like a little bit of a spider jig. And basically it's a soft plastic, I'll flash it over the screen here, where it's almost like a, a, a finesse jig really. But this particular bait, I'm telling you what, I have caught probably thousands of bass on this thing. This is just one of the most effective, natural looking baits 
out there and you can fish it like it's a really good smallmouth bait. I've caught a ton of spotted bass on this. I caught a ton of largemouth on this bait. Now, if I am fishing it in kind of more open water, like rock areas, I typically just use it on like a quarter ounce um, jig head, usually like a football jig that doesn't have a weed guard. And so it's kind of an exposed hook that I kind of fish down there like a tube jig. And that's a really, really effective way of doing it. I've also used this exact same uh, hula grub on a typical kind of jig head. I've actually power fished with a hula grub before on the Coosa River, uh, on, well, actually on Lay Lake, where I was actually flipping it and pitching it in current and using it, and the fish were absolutely biting the heck out of it. What I've noticed about the hula grub is that it gets, you know, I, I tell a lot of people if they're just starting to fish jigs to always start with a finesse jig because you get a lot of bites and then you can kind of work your way up to a little bit bigger jigs. Well, a hula grub gets even more bites than a finesse jig. It is just a great little bait. And you will, I'm telling you what, there's a couple of brands that make um, that spider grub out there. The one that I've always used though is just the Gary Yamamoto hula grub. It's a great, great little bait. I'm telling you what, if you've not fished it, you, you got to, you got to pick it up and you got to fish it. All right, let's get into lure number three. And the lure number three is one that I am still learning. Like I can't sit here and tell you that I'm an expert by any means with this particular bait. It's something that has been around for years. Like it's been around for so, so long, but bass fishermen have really started to pick it up and utilize it and fish it a lot especially with their forward-facing sonar, and that is a little jig head minnow style bait. A little Ned Meeky, you'll hear it called, jig head minnow, minnow, a hover rig. There's a lot of different names for this particular rig, but all it is is a little shad type presentation or bait fish type presentation, like a small fluke on say a quarter ounce jig head. That is probably the most popular thing that we see in fishing right now. Like this particular bait is winning tournaments everywhere. And a lot of anglers are utilizing it with their forward facing sonar, actually seeing fish, casting it out to those fish and keeping that bait above them. But this is something that you do not need forward facing sonar with. You can use it, but you just kind of have to fish it a little bit differently. You know, something that I noticed when I was first starting to catch fish on this bait as I was fishing it where I would cast that bait out, let it hit the bottom. I would kind of pop it off the bottom and then just slowly reel it as while I was kind of bouncing that jig head. I didn't really know where it was in the water column. I just th figured it was probably close to the bottom. And I caught a lot of fish blind casting it that way. But if you have forward facing sonar like a Mega Live, man, this is a very, very powerful technique. Now, one thing that I have learned that's very very special about this particular technique is that when you have a fish that is kind of tracking this bait or coming after this bait, the absolute best thing that you can do is start to speed up your retrieve a little bit. Start to actually bring that bait away from the fish. You're kind of playing this whole cat and mouse game. And there's lures out there on the market where sometimes it's better to drop the bait and let the fish hit it. But this one, I've seen it so many times where if you just start kind of reeling that bait at a little bit faster pace, actually bringing it a little bit higher in the water column, that fish is triggered by that reaction and they go up there and grab it. It's a very, very good technique. And I actually did a full uh, podcast on this particular bait. And I'm gonna leave a link for the podcast right up here. So if you guys wanna know more about kind of that jig head minnow, you can watch this podcast right here. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you tomorrow.